Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. Your old buddy Tim back doing the first video from the new conference room. So uh, pretty exciting. We had our lunch today and we had a lot of folks show up. There were probably 40, 45 people in that room having a, a good meal and uh, just talking and getting to know each other. So if you missed it, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll be here next time. Hey, I wanted to do this quick video um, as a follow-up to previous videos that I've done on the subject of working with investors. Now, the reason this is coming up again is uh, in our Thursday training, um, the question came up about working with investors because as you know, uh, we are in an investment friendly area. I know a number of you as well as myself uh, are working with investors. So uh, the question that came up is, uh, Tim, when I am first starting to work with an investor, what do I need to know? And it's a great question because, uh, you know, a really good investor client can really uh, bring you a lot of money, a lot of commissions. But the thing that you've got to remember is this. If you don't do a good job for that investor, they are not going to use you as their agent. And when I say do a good job, you've got to remember that when you are working with an investor, your job is to find them something to invest in that will give them a good return on their money. All right. It's not just finding them something to invest in. It's finding them something to invest in that will give them a good return. All right. Because if you can't get them a good return, they are not going to use your services very long. Just remember, that's the entire point of working with an investor is not finding them something to invest in finding them something to invest in that gives them a good return on their money. If you do that, if you become their go-to agent who can find those properties and put together those deals, they are going to come back to you time and time again. All right. Um, another question we, we, uh, we had was, uh, do investors sign uh, exclusive buyer's agreement? They do not. Investors work with a number of agents in any given market until they find that one that they can rely on. And again, that's the key is you have to give them results. You have to find them something to invest in that gives them the return on their money. Do that over and over and over. And that investor is going to forget all about all those other agents. They're going to use you exclusively, but they will never sign an exclusive buyer's agency agreement because it's just not how they do business. So let's talk about the things that you should know uh, and the questions you should ask every investor before you start working with them. It's really important that you conduct an interview uh, to find out uh, a number of things. There are probably a dozen points that I want to know before I work with an investor. So I thought we'd go over these quickly and we can explain, uh, expand on them. Uh, in the group coaching. So uh, you just want to explain to the investor, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Investor, uh, I want to get to know you a little better so I can do the best job possible for you. So I'm just going to ask you some questions. All right, we're going to have a little conversation here. Uh, it's a lot like asking questions of a, uh, of a buyer. You know, we talk about the questions you should ask your average buyer to find out exactly what the best home is for them. It's the same process with investors. So the very first question that you should ask is, how long have you been investing? Well, why is that important? Well, because if they are a, a brand new beginner investor, they've just seen some YouTube videos or they've been on a, a blog or they've read a book, uh, but have never actively invested in something, well, they really don't know what they're doing. And they're going to look to you for guidance and your job is going to be uh, a lot harder because you're going to be educating them along the way. And if you don't know the process, well, you can't do a very good job of educating them. If they are a seasoned investor, investors who have done this more than once or twice or three times and know what they're doing, they're probably going to know more than you do at this point, And they are going to be a, a great source of education for you because they are going to kind of guide you along as to what you need to do to help them find these properties. So it's very important that you know how long they've been investing. All right. The longer, the better. The next question is where have they been investing? You know, a lot of folks invest in their backyard, but then I work with investors who invest in Alabama, uh, Richmond, California, Seattle, Colorado, Atlanta, Florida, 
they invest all over the country. These are uh, usually pretty seasoned, sophisticated investors who are not afraid to go into a foreign market and put their money in. So you want to know where have they been investing? Uh, where have they had the most success? That's again is important for you to know because it tells you a little bit about their mentality, their risk uh, aversion, and uh, how willing they are to dive into a market. Uh, I talk to a lot of investors who say they're interested in investing here, but then when you present them deals, they kind of hem and haw and they, you know, they may uh, take their time and of course they lose the investment. So again, it goes back to where they've been investing, uh, what their experience is investing in those markets. It's important for you to know. Um, the next question is why North Alabama? Why did they want to invest here? Uh, usually I will get an answer. Well, hey, I saw you on YouTube uh, on some podcast talking about what a great market Huntsville is, blah, blah, blah. Or they've done their homework. There are a lot of lists out there that show that Huntsville is one of the top investment uh, spots here in the country. So I want to know why. What are their reasons for being here and have they done their research? How much do they know? Uh, it's not unusual for them to know absolutely nothing other than this area was on some list somewhere. So then it becomes my job to educate them about North Alabama, to tell them about the economy here, about the, uh, the, the uh, scarcity of homes, the urgency of buying, that sort of thing. I have to educate them about this area, which I don't mind doing because I know it much better than they do. Um, the next question I would ask is, what have they been investing in? All right, have they been investing in single family homes, multifamily, apartments, condos, vacation property, uh, commercial? What have they been investing in? I wanna know this because I wanna know again what their experience is, what their exposure is, and what their areas of potential expertise are. So it's important for you to know what they've been investing in. Uh, the next question is, what is their model? And by that I mean, are they looking to buy and hold, looking for something they can fix up, keep and use as a rental or an Airbnb or corporate housing, or are they a, a buy and flip? Meaning they're looking for properties that they can uh, put some work into and flip for a profit. It's important to know that because they're two completely different models. If you are working with a flipper, you are going to have to get homes at a price point that allows that flipper to put in the repairs and still make a profit, all right? If you're working with someone who is a buy and hold, well, they're willing to pay a little more for property because they're not selling it to make their profit. They're gonna make their profit over the long haul. So are they buy and hold? Are they fix and flip? Are they a mixture of both? What is the business model that they are uh, most comfortable with? Because that's gonna tell you how you have to negotiate to get them a property. Um, next, um, what do they own now? All right, they've been investing for a while. Do they own anything? Did they just flip everything? You wanna know what their portfolio is. If I talk to an investor uh, who has you know, 30 homes all over the country, I know that I'm working with a serious investor. Or if I'm working with someone who tells me they have flipped 20 houses in the past two years, again, I know I'm working with someone serious. Um, a lot of the times you're gonna to talk to folks who are investors who have not done their first investment. In my mind, you're not an investor until you have invested in something, all right? So keep that in mind as well. A lot of times you're gonna to talk to folks who, you know, watched a video, watched a TV show, read a book, uh, and think they can immediately dive in and they call themselves an investor. Again, you're not an investor until you have invested in something, all right? Um, next, let's talk about the money. How much money do they have to invest and how easily accessible are those funds? Okay, so I talk to investors all the time that have millions of dollars in cash and they've got, you know, easy access to it. They can simply make a phone call or do a wire transfer. The funds are there. You'll also talk to investors who use like their bank account or their 401k or they've got a line of credit at a bank or what have you. And then you'll find those investors who have to do traditional mortgages. You know, they're buying investment property by putting 20% down 
and getting a mortgage on the property. You need to know who you're dealing with. Okay, if you're working with a cash rich investor, as, as my main investor is, um, I can literally send him a home and he can write a check for it that day if he wants to. If you're working with someone who is having to borrow money, either through mortgage company, a bank, or even a private money lender, well, there's going to be some more strings there, and that's going to add, again, time and money to the deal and will affect the bottom line. So it's good to know how much money do they have to invest and how easily can they get to it. You know, if you have uh, someone who calls you up and says, look, I've got uh, $200,000 in my 401k, that's what I want to invest, well, they might buy one house. But if you've got another investor who says, I've got a million dollars in my 401k, they might be five or six houses, all right? There's absolutely nothing wrong with selling one house, okay? That money's as good as anything, but it's always nice to have a repeat investor. So how much money do they have? Um, what is the access to it? Is it their money? Is it other people's money? What have you? Um, and again, how much do they have to invest? All right, you need to know that. And if an investor says, well, I don't know how much I have to invest, you need to say, you can call me back when you know. All right. It's so one of the things. Don't be intimidated by investors. OK. Now, some of them are rich guys and gals. They've got lots of money. It's been my experience that those are the ones I really like working with. They're nice people. Uh, the ones that I don't care to work with are the investors who, um, again, they haven't ever invested anything. They're going to have to go borrow the money. It's literally like working with a typical buyer with the same pain in the neck sort of thing. So um, what's next? OK, how much do they have invest? What price point are they comfortable with? Are they uh, preferring $150,000 rental homes? Are they good with a million dollar commercial building? What's the price point so you know what to find them, all right? If they are wanting just uh, anything under 100000 well, of course, in this market, there are none. Um, and that's one of the things. Let me point this out. If you talk to an investor and they say, well, I am uh, interested in buying um, property under $100,000 that I can get for 50 cents on the dollar and I can make uh, $500 a month cash flow, you have to tell them there is no such animal. That is a unicorn in this market. It simply doesn't exist. You know, the average investment uh, property in this market is probably in the 150 range and up. Uh, we've done some investments that are four, five, six hundred thousand dollars. All right. So you've got to know what their price point is, what they're comfortable spending. And if there are no deals, you just have to tell them there are no deals. Don't be afraid to tell this investor, hey, man, I uh, appreciate your criteria, but you're not going to find that in this market. I've done that. I can't tell you how many times I ended up not working with them simply because I knew I could not find them anything in this market that matched their criteria. Uh, the next thing I want to know is what are their expected returns? What do they expect to get for their money? Now, in investing, there's this thing called the 1% uh, the rule. The 1% rule states that if a home costs $200,000, you should get 1% monthly rent from that home, meaning $2,000. Well, in this market, the 1% rule typically does not apply. Very rarely are we seeing a $200,000 home that will rent for $2,000. It might rent for $1,500, but it's not going to rent for $2,000. So when an investor quotes me the, you know, I'm, I want the 1% rule, and it's just some BS someone made up, along the way that you should get 1%. I just have to tell them, well, in this market, the odds of you getting a 1% deal, slim to none, but we might get you close. Again, be honest with them. There's no need to bull BS them, you know? Be honest with them, let them know, because it's gonna save you a lot of trouble. Uh, the next thing that I want to know is, are they going to be a hands-on or hands-off investor in this market? If they are looking to buy and hold, meaning they want to buy something in the market and rent it out. Well, your job as their realtor is to simply find the deal, close the deal, that's it. You are not expected to be the property manager or the person that schedules the workman or what have you. Uh, you can certainly send them a referral for that sort of thing. But, you know, you're not going to be in there doing it. So are they going to be hands off, meaning that they need your help finding those people to do those jobs, or maybe they're hands-on. 
I've got an investor from California. He has his own people here. He has his own work crew. He has his own cleaning crew. And really what I do is we close the deal. I walk away and he does everything else. So, uh, and that leads us to the last question and that's this, what do they expect of you? What do they expect of you? Do they expect you to send them five or six properties a day? Do they expect you to blast out multiple offers at once? Do they expect you to just lowball every property on the market? It's good that you know what their expectations are so you can address them right out of the gate. Uh, I am not a lowball agent. I will never agree to just shotgun out 50 lowball offers like some investors will ask you to do. I've had investors ask me to do that. Well, I want you to send a 75% offer to every listing in the MLS. I'm not going to do that. I don't have the time. I don't want to get the reputation of being that realtor. Okay. So if they expect that of me, I have to set them straight pretty quickly. I also want to know, you know, um, uh, what, what they expect from me as far as um, delivering the deals to them, how many, you know, if, if they want me to send them five or six deals a day, they're just not there. There's not that many deals in the market. What are their expectations of me? I want to know that because I don't want to deliver or under deliver and I don't want to over promise. So if they're saying, well, I want someone who, you know, I can call and drop on a dime and you can go out and look at a property. That's fine. I do that. But I'm not the guy that's going to blast out 20 offers at, you know, 50% off a of retail. That's just not me. Uh, what are the expectations as far as the properties? Are they expecting to buy move-in ready? Are they okay buying fixer uppers? What are their expectations there? And finally, what are the expectations again on the returns? If they tell me again that they are looking for 1% rentals, I'm going to tell them that that just doesn't work that way. If they expect to make 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars off of every flip, again, those days are just gone for the moment. They're typically not going to do that in this market. As competitive as it is, you are not going to find deals that let you buy homes at such a discounted rate that you're going to get them for 50 cents on the dollar. So if that's their expectations, you need to be honest with them and let them know. You know, the key to this, all of this, working with an investor is you have to be the expert. You have to know this market better than anybody. You need to know the best parts of town that, uh, to invest in. You need to know the, the median price. You need to know the comps. And you learn that stuff just by working it and getting in the MLS and, and getting used to the market and getting to know the market. Um, you know, there are certain areas of town that I will not let an investor go in. There are other areas of town where any deal that pops up, I'm ready to go get it. You've got to know this market. South Huntsville is great for fix and flips and remodels and Airbnbs. Uh, but then you've got, uh, you're never going to find anything in the city of Madison. North Huntsville, there are some questionable areas there, but there's also a lot of good areas. If you go further out, Hazel Green, Meridianville, great areas. New Market, great area. Owens Crossroads, again, great area. Athens, Decatur. Anything that, that runs a ring around Madison and primarily South Huntsville, are really good locations. So again, you have to be the expert about this area. If someone calls you up and says, hey, tell me about the Huntsville market, you need to be prepared to tell them about our market. And if you don't know anything about the market, maybe I'll do another video on that because they're looking to you to be the expert. So there you go. The key to working with investors, ask questions, be brutally honest with them, don't be intimidated by them. And more than anything, think of them. You want to be their partner. They're the money guys, but you're the guy or girl here on the ground finding those investments that are going to give them solid returns. And if you do that right, this it's not this, it's this. Uh, you become their partner on the ground and you will become their go-to guy or gal. So um, anyway, I thought I uh, just wanted to run over that because I do think it's very important since so many of us are working with investors. If you have questions, post them below so I can address them to the group. If we need to do uh, some more brainstorming, group coaching on the topic, we certainly will. I'm also going to do a video uh, later in the week on uh, wholesalers. 
because a question came up about what they do, how you work with them, that sort of thing. So, all right, that's it, guys. If you've got any questions, comments, drop them in the, uh, in the comments below. We'll address them with the group. Uh, and uh, otherwise, if I can do anything for you, always give me a call. I'll see you soon.